The Creation of the American Pit Bull Terrier Audiobook, Joseph L. Colby Part 3 Colby's Pincher Newburyport's famous fighting dog Heights Teddy was owned by Jack White of Salem, Massachusetts. He was a proven bloodhound and winner of major battles in Boston in the 1990s. Pansy de Colby was owned by John P. Colby, she was a bitch who had beaten some of the best dogs of his time. She was a vicious nose fighter with plenty of bite power. With lining from Pansy to Teddy, she produced a good litter of puppies, including two of the biggest and bravest dogs that ever fought. These two dogs were Colby's Pincher and Colby's Major. A major log is described elsewhere in the book. Colby's Pincher was a white dog with black markings. He weighed 72 pounds at current and his best fight weight was 56 pounds. Pincher actually stopped or killed over 20 dogs and never found a dog that could keep him for 40 minutes. He was a throat and chest fighter who had only one determination in mind and he did it in short order. Any dog that ever fought Pincher and survived was of no value as a stud dog, guard dog, or pit dog. His ability to punish was incredible and is rarely found in the common pit dog. Pincher has become one of the most famous fighting dogs in the world. Pigeon fanciers came from all parts of New England to see the big Pincher. Dogs in Boston scoured the country for a dog that could beat him. They spent a lot of money on fighting dogs to take on Pincher, only to lose their dogs and their money. The money derived from Pincher's pit record, breeding services and sales of dogs and puppies sired by him earned the owner over $7,000, a record difficult for any man and dog to beat. A record of nearly 50 pit winning centers on Pincher, his father, grandfather, Cockney Charlie Driver, and also his children and grandchildren. All were proven hunting dogs. Pincher sired dogs like Colby's Malachi, 30-pound American champion, Colby's Twister, winner over Parson Jim Moberly's Big Boy, Colby's Bunch, a proven hunting dog and producer of some of the greatest fighting dogs of all time, Colby's Misery, a great game, Little Bitch, the famous chug from Coke and several others. Pincher was the grandfather of Harry Clark's Kager, winner of some of the best dogs in the country, Bruce's Battle a proven excellent hunting dog, 37, Colby's Dixie, aka Curry's Manowar, won Sprague's Hot Rock and wrestled 3 hours and 50 minutes to a draw against Bob de Armitage, also the king of Curry, victorious over the great dog, Captain, in 4 hours and 12 minutes, Jerry de Colby. Nancy de Colby, head bitch of Colligan's White, Hillary Salt and many other proven hunting dogs. Pincher was considered the best fishing dog in the country during his time. Breeders who owned dogs or puppies close in blood to Pincher valued them highly and received good prices for their puppies because of this. Despite his weight in the pits, he was an easy dog to condition and enjoyed his training very much. He had a pleasant disposition and was very good-natured, except when he was in the pit. Pincher lived to be quite an old dog, but in his later years he became blind, which made him almost less helpful. However, he died a natural death and went where all good fighting dogs go. Colby's Kager Puppy February 10, 1934 Sire Colby's Gully, Dam Colby Cinderella created and owned by Joseph L. Colby, Sacramento, California. Kager is now in the hands of Ham Morris, Louisville, Kentucky, who is one of the biggest conditioners and manipulators in the game right now. PR Exeter Ace located 225 miles southeast of California's state capital is a small town called Exeter. It lies in a valley rich in fruit and truck gardening. Almost from the main street you can see the Sierra Mountains, covered with snow, noting the strength that has resisted the changing times. 
In this city of approximately 5,000 inhabitants, about 200 American pit bull terriers live. On average, one dog for every 25 people. A record I don't believe can be matched anywhere. In this city lived PR. Exeter Ace, UKC number. 34274, he was owned by Casey Lawrence, prominent garage owner, until his death in September 1935. Ace, as he was commonly called, was sired on September 20, 1933. He was sired by P.R. L. Matador formerly of Leverich's Topsy and created by J. Leverich Jr. Ace was an all-white dog with a black spot. His best weight in the pit was 48 pounds, although he struggled from 43 to 52 pounds. He was a very quiet and polite dog, but in the pit he was hell turned inside out. He had won two fights without official registration before he was 16 months old. Later, in March 1935, he faced Black Diamond from Vanderweide and won the contest in 15 teenage minutes. Ace was conditioned and manipulated by his owner, Casey Lawrence. Vanderweide's Black Diamond was conditioned and manipulated by Al. Brown. Sat Tai Lane was the referee. On May 26 of the same year, he faced Young Red Buck. UKC 217 to 389 and lost the fight in a foul in 37 minutes. His trainer was accused of pushing him into a handle, when in reality he was being placed in his hazard line. Ace had been winning the fight easily up to this point. He was conditioned and controlled by Casey Lawrence. Young Red Buck was conditioned and controlled by a Mr. Keller. Sat Tai Lane was the referee. In September of the same year, Ace was confronted with the old general of the arena, P.R. Brown's Kager, UKC 43520, a winner of some tough battles. Ace won the fight in 52 minutes of the fastest dogfight ever seen on the coast. By the end of the contest both dogs were completely exhausted. Ace was conditioned and handled by Casey Lawrence. Kager was conditioned and handled by Alf Brown. John Martin was the referee. Ace died shortly after this match and thus ended the career of a great fighting dog. He spawned several promising prospects who will see action in the future. Colby's Malachi Puppy 1904 Sire, Colby's Pincher, Dam. Colby's Neats Pit Weight. 35 pounds. Created and owned by John P. Colby, Newburyport. Massachusetts. Malachi was victorious over Flag's Bucky in 35 minutes, at Turkey Hill, West Newbury, Massachusetts, on November 2, 1908. Malachi was open to take on any dog in the world $4.50 QA side. He was billed as the 35-pound American champion. Colby's Bunch produced June 1909. Colby's Pincher, Dam, Colby's Nell Bread and Estate of John P. Colby, Newburyport. Massachusetts. Colby's Bunch Colby's Bunch was one of the greatest hound producers that ever lived. Bunch was born on June 9, 1909 and was sired by Nell de Colby, Pincher, formerly Colby. He was a 44-pound dog that had the strength and strength of a 50-pound dog. He sired dogs like King by Jim Curry, winner in 4 hours and 12 minutes over the great dog Captain, at Lexington, Kentucky, April 28, 1918. He sired Manowar by Jim Curry, who fought for three hours and fifty minutes to a draw against Armitage's Bob at Lexington, Kentucky, December 12, 1918. Bunch also sired Armitage's Kager, later known as Clark's Tramp. 
Tramp is recognized as the largest dog ever owned by George Armitage. Bunch also sired Tony, Jerry, Nancy, Sal, by Hillary, by Colby and others who were proven bloodhounds. Colby's Gully UKC 227121 Puppy April 8, 1932 Sire Billy from Colby, Dam, Colby's Bell, created by John P. Colby, Newburyport, Massachusetts Estate of Joseph L. Colby, Sacramento, California Colby's Gully Gully was sent to me by my father, John P. Colby, at the age of 13 months. He was sired by Colby's Billy and Colby's Bell. My father's intention was that I would use the dog for breeding purposes only, as there was no assumption about gameness in the breeding of his ancestors. I had other ideas about the dog and taught him to the whole. After putting three big tough dogs on him one after the other I decided he was capable of taking on any dog at his weight. In August 1933 he stopped Jack of Linwood in 21 minutes. On March 4, 1934 he was pitted against Al. Brown Oregon Jack. This contest aroused considerable interest and many spectators flocked to see it. Among the most prominent fanciers were Jack Sullivan of Reno, Nevada, George Armitage of New Kensington, Pennsylvania, and a doctor. Reno Hill, Nevada, famous for cockfighting. John Martin was elected referee and stakeholder. The dogs were weighed, Gully weighing 39 pounds and Oregon Jack 39 pounds. The dogs were washed and taken to their respective corners. Once the fight started, it looked like Gully would never make it out of the pit alive. Jack was a severe punishment dog and would stop Gully from getting him seriously, but he would punish Gully severely. At 17 minutes, Gully turned over and scratched. At this point the fight was even and Gully had just started to go and was giving Jack a chance. At the end of 27 and 2 minutes, another turn was taken and Jack refused to scratch. Gully was declared the winner. Three months later, in May, Gully stopped the Battle of Barber by 10 minutes. Regarding the upcoming contest, many collectors across the country wanted to know about it. The people at Pew really know the inside story of the contest and it's not my policy to make excuses for losing a fight. Therefore, I will describe it as it happened. Early in the year 1935, I challenged P. A. DeWeese to a contest. He should use a dog known as Tudor Spider, UKC 216-594, and I, Colby's Gully 227-121. The weight was set to 38 pounds max and a contract drawn up, signed and cancelled. The contest was scheduled to take place near Exeter, California on the afternoon of April 28, 1935. On the eve of the battle, four of us, with Gully, traveled by car to Exeter, a distance of about 225 miles. Arriving there at 13.30. M. We lodge in a hotel. This long drive did Gully no good, and we were all pretty tired by the time we got there. On the morning of the battle, I gave Gully a light walk so he could relieve his muscles. Around noon, the dogs were weighed in a pack. The balance of the purse was handed over to Satai Lane, the stakeholder, before the dogs were weighed. Spider weighed 35% pounds and Gully weighed 36 pounds. We all left for the den, which was in a hut under three large elm trees. It was an ideal location for the cave. Just before washing the dogs, I took Gully for a short walk so he could empty his bowels. After the dogs were washed and taken to their corners, the umpire, John Martin, announced the principal and so the battle began. They met in the center of the pit, 
both managing to hold on. Gully threw Spider and for the first five minutes he had him down. Spider grabbed Gully's right front paw and punished her so hard that the balance of the fight was almost useless. Spider had slashed Gully's wrist in the same place it had been damaged in a fight the previous year. After the battle lasted seven minutes, Spider grabbed Gully by the nose and held for four minutes and nearly ripped his nose off. At the fifteen-minute mark, Gully turned and clawed for Spider. Spider grabbed Gully by the other front leg and shook him hard, cutting him. Gully grabbed Spider's neck and broke Spider's leg. At the twenty-one minute mark, Gully took another turn. Now it was Spider's turn to scratch, which he did. From that point on, Spider was boss and never let Gully fall off the ground again. Gully had lost virtually all use of his front legs, so he was only able to hold on to what he could while lying on the ground. I knew Gully would never make another scratch in the condition he was in if he was called upon to do so. However, at the end of thirty-five minutes, the dogs were fighting in a neutral corner, when Spider made a turn. This time it was Gully's turn to scratch. We switched and when the referee ordered Gully to scratch he went limp between my legs. Spider was declared the winner and became the eighth official UKC champion. After Gully was completely healed I pitted him against a 16 pounds heavier dog that was sent to me to be conditioned and matched. In 41 minutes, the big dog got tired and refused to continue. At this tryout, Gully had regained his old style, and the intention was to get back at him, but after that he got into a kennel fight with one of his sons that lasted, according to neighbors, well over two hours. In that kennel fight, Jiley lost some teeth, which prevents him from being paired again. This was the third part of the Joseph L. Colby audiobook. Sign up so you don't miss the fourth part. My name is Rodolfo and I thank you all for every like and comment. God bless you all. I went.